Well, hi everybody, it's Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And I have a couple versions of an underwater Copic Sea. And these are gonna be really easy. I'm gonna show you a complex way to color whales, but an easy way to make water. And these are two new stamp sets from Ellen Hudson that I'm showing today. The whales on the left are the video we're gonna to see to, in this particular one. And there's another video, I'll link at the end, where you can see the cards made with the Arctic Pals. They both come with their die sets, and then there's this other little die that we're going to use today with the whales, because we're going to create a clean and simple pair of cards. Aren't they adorable? They're going to be so much fun, and they're really easy to do. If you're not a Copic colorist, you can do the water. And then these are the uh, more advanced ones with the blizzard <laughs> that is made using the Arctic Pal set. So you'll be able to click and see the other video of that one as soon as you're finished watching this one. Now with the whales, I'm gonna show you some complex things to do, but we're gonna start with the simple coloring. And you can color something with a zero marker first. What that does is moisten the paper, gets the, I don't know, gets its mojo going, whatever it is. And if you want your colors to blend really easily, color them on top of the zero. Now they may bleed a little bit, so be aware of that. If you're a person who's concerned with with things bleeding out, that will happen sometimes because you're putting extra moisture on. But look at how soft those edges are. They're not hard edges because there's that moisture in the paper already. And since I wanted to blend these out to white at the bottom and give them white tummies, I thought that would be a good exercise to do in this one. And I'm going to let that one dry a little bit after I get them all finished here because I wanna add some complex thing on top of that, but I'm gonna let that sit for a bit because I don't wanna do it while it's too soft and wet. Now this one, I want you to watch the edges of the marker. Look how hard that edge is compared to what it was in the whale above. Same thing with this one. I didn't use the zero first. If you use the colorless blender, it softens out that edge. So it can be accomplished both ways. It just takes a little more work to do if you don't have a color down first. That's one of the reasons why I put down my lightest color first. But since my lightest color is white, because I'm gonna blend these down to white, the zero marker being first can sometimes really make that whole process go a lot easier on you. And one of the other funny things that you may notice is the C1 looks a little bit on the pink side until it dries, and even after it dries a little bit. I don't know why that is. It's just a weird thing that it does. All right. Here's the complex part. If you want to add sparkles of water that are shining down onto the top of the whale, then make sort of a loose crosshatch. Don't make an exact crosshatch because it's not going to be that way. But the lines come from the water above and the, the shading from the water, and it allows the, the light to come through in these little interesting shapes. And I started out doing it with the dark marker at the very top, and then I moved down to the C3 because that's going to help that color to slowly fade out as well. Don't go all the way around down to the tummy because that light, that dappled light is only going to hit the top of the whales. It's not going to go completely all the way around the belly, but it'll go a little bit down the side, which is why using a couple of different grays is going to help to pull that color down and around a little bit and make it look dimensional. But you can just color the gray whales. Don't worry about this fancy part if you are new at Copic coloring. And if you are new at Copic coloring, you want some help with your Copic coloring, try the Copic Jumpstart class. That's gonna help you a lot with blending, with choosing colors, with understanding your markers in a whole new and different way. So I recommend that class to you. There's a link in the doobly-doo down below. Now here's that fancy die. And what we're gonna do instead of coloring on the die is we're gonna color on a piece of paper that's slightly smaller. I have my die piece cut with the frame around it and stuff. And that one is cut to four by four. So this is like three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And I'm just coloring swooshies. And you wanna make sure that it's big enough that you're, you're coloring wide enough that your dye is gonna fit over top. And I'm just making swooshies in a couple different colors. These B9s blend really, really well. And if you color water, if you color night skies or denim jeans, the B9s are a really good group of, of blues that are gonna work really well. But look, I'm just throwing on color, just throwing on color, 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 until it looks like something water-ish. And then I'm gonna use my, you know, the thing in the background just as something so that I don't get marker all over the place. 
but I'm coloring the little strands inside the die with a light blue marker just so that it's not too garish and white. Just be careful to stop short of the edge so you don't get little marker bloops going over. And then I'm going to stamp little fishies. There's all kinds of little other stamps that you can use with this set. There's also stamps that you can stamp their bellies with different patterns and stuff. So there's a lot of fun things that you can do with this set in addition to just coloring them. But you know me, I like to color things. And then I'm going to intertwine this little guy. I have some adhesive on the back of him and I'm trying to shove him down in there and he's stuck to one of them. But I want to make him kind of go under and up and over and all that kind of thing. And I have some dimensional adhesive I put under his tail. So his tail's going to stick out over the frame and pop up a little bit as well. Isn't he just adorable? And the card itself I popped up onto a, um, a little bit of dimensional adhesive and put the year curl in it on the inside. Now this one's going to be even easier. Look at me, I'm getting messy. Getting totally messy, just doing a bunch of color. And using the same colors as I did before, just throw a bunch on there. And don't dare stress over whether it blends or not, because that's not going to matter. Now if you have a colorless blender, you can make giant bubbles with it. You have to have your marker really juiced up in order to get it to work. And I was getting tired of trying to make this work, because I wanted these really big juicy bubbles, since they're going to have to appear through that little frame. So I got creative and I took out my big bottle of colorless blender and there, it comes in this big bottle. It also comes in one that's the size of the reinker bottles. I suggest just getting the big one because there's so much you can do with it. And I'm just tapping it until I kind of get some dots out of it. And I'm just going to put it right over top of everything and watch what it does just for fun, just to see what happens. And it made these really cool giant bubbles which were just, they were beautiful. And when we put that, that little template right over top of it from the die, it's going to just be perfect. So this is one of those super easy backgrounds. You really don't have to stress out at all. But look at it as you watch it over time, it starts to make these big circles around itself and everything around each one of the dots. Very, very cool. I'm coloring the frame again, these little strands going across here, but this time I thought I'd try doing a couple different colors. Just a little swipe of a different color here and there to add a little uniqueness to it, just for uh, kicks and grins, just to see how it worked, and I thought it was kind of cool. I think there might be some other things you could do with this, so play around with it if you have dyes like this that you want to throw some color onto. And then I will weave my other whale in there and I'll let him face upward this time. And him on the inside, I think you're swale. And I put the other whale on the inside. So much fun and clean and simple. There's just clean and simple cards. They don't take a lot of fancy coloring. You can skip all the water reflections on top of them and just make simpler whales. But they're a lot of fun to make. And they make really happy cards that you can send out to somebody because you should go make people happy. All right, the other video, if you want to go see that one, is right here if you want to go see the blizzard. And I will see you again next time in my next video. Have a great day.